We are at the American Heart Association. We are in New Orleans in 2016. And there's a paper in the Jack lineup of December 13th, 2016. It's taking a look at the idea of obesity in heart failure patients with preserved ejection fraction. And this happens to be a research letter. And I want to introduce you to Salvatore Carbone, who is an instructor of medicine at Virginia Commonwealth University in Richmond. First off, what led you to this particular paper on this subject of obesity, which we had way too many patients with that? First of all, thanks for inviting again to discuss about this paper, also on behalf of my co-authors. Um, the main reason that drove me to do this to do this study with the, all my collaborators is that um, I was an, I am a nutritionist by training, and I've always been very, very interested in trying to understand the metabolic components of heart failure, and uh, this specific form of heart failure, heart failure with preserved ejection fraction that we often just called half bath right. to make it shorter. It's characterized by a number of comorbidities, and the biggest comorbidity seems to be metabolic derangements, such as uh, 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 obesity and diabetes. And uh, we really wanted to investigate more in details, more in deep, in depth, what is, how, obes how is obesity affecting heart failure with preserved, you know, heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, more specifically, trying to look at body composition uh, and how body composition compartments correlate with the uh, uh, exercise tolerance in half bath, which seems to be uh, exercise intolerance, the biggest uh, problem in these patients. How were you looking at body composition? What were, your, what were you using? So we're using these 27 patients. We use a BIA, a bilateral impedance analysis, which is a measure to uh, estimate uh, fluid status and then uh, uh, fat mass and fat-free mass. Um, and it's usually better than BMI. Which is definitely better than BMI, and that's why we're doing it. And I think that uh, one of the biggest limitations of BMI is that it doesn't really tell you your body composition. It tells you uh, how much, uh, what is your weight. But if you take an athlete, for instance, you have maybe a BMI of 35 or 40, but definitely that wouldn't be classified as obese because the amount of lean mass is very high compared to the amount of fat mass. And then if you look at the actual definition of obesity from the World Health Organization, obesity is not a high BMI. It's a, an excess body fat that impair health. And to do that, we need to measure body composition. So what did you find when you did? So what we, what we found was that in these patients, first of all, our population in Richmond, Virginia, is a very uh, uh, obese uh, population, mostly, at least in our study. If you think that our median BMI was 43.3, so very high, extremely high. What we found is that a BMI, and specifically measure of adiposity, such as fat mass index and uh, leptin, which is a hormone produced by the adipose tissue, inversely and significantly correlated uh, with uh, uh, peak oxygen consumption, which is a measure of exercise capacity in these patients and a predictor of uh, mortality. Um, while, other, uh, while these parameters did not correlate with cardiac function parameters, and we measure cardiac function either at rest and at exercise, because lots of half pef patients do have uh, diastolic dysfunction, uh, at, uh, do not have ex uh, diastolic dysfunction at rest, but do have it at exercise. Right. And so we saw that there was this uh, correlation, inverse correlation with uh, uh, exercise uh, capacity parameters, but not with cardiac function. So what does it tell you? So what it's telling us is uh, within the limitation of the study, right. the, you know, this is an association study, so we cannot really prove a causation, is uh, what it's telling us is that obesity seems to really contribute to exercise intolerance in patients with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, but rather than affecting by directly, directly affecting cardiac function, it, we should just consider obesity as a comorbid, con, comorbid condition that it's uh, uh, impairing exercise tolerance in uh, heart failure. I mean, it's really hard to get a patient to exercise, period, but when they have obesity that's sitting on top of it that makes it really difficult to move, it becomes a major issue. Definitely, definitely. And uh, I think this is in line also with another, uh, other findings that have been recently published uh, uh, in JAMA this year where they showed that the caloric restriction intervention in patients with obesity and half path improved exercise capacity in terms of a peak VO2 rel uh, relative to body weight, but did not improve any other uh, cardiac parameters. And so, again, showing that obesity is a major contributor in, uh, heart in, uh, for exercise tolerance in our failure with preserved ejection fraction, but probably their major involvement is not in, uh, related to the impairment in the cardiac function, but rather to the exercise uh, intolerance. Your work certainly seems to suggest that, wouldn't it, that it is more important than ever to get patients to try and lose weight if possible? Yes. Th yes, in terms of improvement in exercise tolerance, which is uh, the, big the biggest uh, 
limiting factor of this patient. So right. definitely, and this is the study published in JAMA this year uh, from Dr. Kitzman and his group, definitely is proving that if you lose weight, your exercise capacity improves. Um, if you lose weight with the caloric restriction, because if you lose it with exercise, then things might be a little different. And so definitely weight loss should be rec probably recommended in uh, uh, patients with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, which have an excessive body fat, so they're, meaning that they're obese. Um, larger trials, clinical trials, randomized clinical trials are definitely needed to prove this, uh, but we, I think we are on a good, uh, good pathway. This Is this point. a topic you'd like to uh, investigate further? Oh yes, definitely, <laughs> definitely. And we're now also looking at uh, not just the body composition, uh, but also at uh, dietary components. Oh, okay. And so we're looking at the diet of this patient, trying to see if there is a, um, some specific dietary components that might affect exercise capacity as well. Well, this particular research letter is scheduled for the December 13th issue of JAX, so please look for it for CardioSource World News and CardioSource World News Interventions. I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire. <laughs>